Hello and welcome to Microsoft Access for the Accountant Training Videos. My name is Josh Hunt and I'm a financial analyst based out of Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, my goal with these videos is to basically expose um, my fellow accountants and analysts to um, basic access skills and basic VBA and general SQL skills. Um, you're not going to become an expert by watching these videos and you know I'm probably gonna although I will get into it some somewhat I'm going to avoid too much of the nitty-gritty but at least from these videos I hope that you get an idea of what's possible and a lot of times that is half the battle once you know what's possible you can um, basically have a better idea of which path to go down so um, access in the accounting environment um, one reason you if I can think of one word to describe why you might want to learn access if you're an analyst or an accountant and it would be flexibility uh, access is very cheap a lot of companies have it already installed on their computers and you can basically through an ODBC connection connect to the back end of many different accounting software packages Oracle, Dynamics GP, QuickBooks um, even with the third-party software um, the cloud-based systems like NetSuite so it's, it's, it provides you a lot of flexibility uh, if you don't like your canned reports for example you can make your own with access and they can be dynamic again through connecting uh, to the back end of your accounting system so with that being said let's uh, get started um, with the rest of this video I'm going to just try to introduce you to some examples and learning tools for uh, joining tables so our first stop here interestingly enough is Excel and what I'm going to do is basically expose you or sh compare the VLOOKUP function to joining tables um, right here we have a table and it's basically you got kit name, kit parts, and within each kit, as you can see, there are there can be multiple parts. So emergency kit has four parts, repellent kit has two. And so we can try to use the VLOOKUP function. And what happens when we do that? Well let's see. And forgive me, I I can't use F4 while I'm recording this video, so my ain't dollar signs are being put in manually but um, so we can so let's bring back the first record for each kit well what if we what if we want more than just the first record what if we want both records um, for example we don't want this line repeated with just the banana data involved um, well we can turn to access for that and let me open up the right act bear with me a moment okay so here is what we were just looking at inventory journal um, in access form and so if we come here well, let's just sort of to make this a little bit easier let's just say we want to look at the part groupings of kit or furniture so we connect to the parts table which I can show you here parts um, probably what you imagine it would look like so you come over here and you drag down part grouping which we did like that which we've already done and so kit or furniture so we basically bring back kits or furniture as you can imagine so the next query query one is basically bringing um, the query we just created inventory kit and furniture we were just looking at and we're going to connect that to the kits table so here is the kits table which is basically what you just saw in Excel a little bit earlier so and so what do we do with this well we bring in 
um, well back up for a second we're connecting part code to kit name and that's because well the part code really is the same you can see sunshine kit here and then it's the same thing as kit name in this table so that's why we're connecting on that and so we um, and now we're going to create a new field called parts new and it's going to be you know if kit parts is null then bring back the part code otherwise bring bring back kit parts and that's just basically saying well if you don't have a kit part if it's null then that means it's not a it's not a kit the the overall part is not a kit so just bring back the regular part code name otherwise bring back the kit parts and then we also bring back the quantity drag this down the quantity of the kits so are within the kits so we run this and you can see it's broken out emergency kit on the 17th it's broken out so now but keep in mind I'm not going to go on with this but this is just the first step into making a broken out inventory journal because you notice over here your unit cost is still the unit cost associated with the emergency kit so the movement of let's see 5 times 2 10 um, water 99, 91's um, it's not um, the unit cost of 41 you would have to you know you'd make another query bring in the correct unit cost and create an, uh, a corrected unit extended cost through multiplication and then after that process is done you would have your broken out um, inventory journal but I, I don't want to go through all that I don't want to make this video too long I just wanted to show you that you know basically joining tables you can kind of think of it as a learning tool um, as a sort of an expandable VLOOKUP and so I just wanted to hone in on that point but um, now sometimes that can get you in trouble and let me show you what I mean <clears throat> so here we are um, let's look at this general ledger table this vendor activity table what if your boss came to you and said you know what I'd really like to see a vendor field next to this general ledger table so I can see you know if the transaction is associated with a vendor I can just see it looking at everything instead of just general ledger tra transactions that are associated with the vendor so um, what we could do is we can try to you know, make a query um, general ledger vendor activity join by check number drag that down and uh oh you can already see something's a little strange here we got 20,595 but what we just what we originated with was only 2245 so what went wrong well you see here there is there are two instances of the check number 555322 um, split between these two cost centers so and that's perfectly legitimate you can split a, a check and you can expense it out to do two different cost centers that's very common um, but when when that happens or when that happened you basically your your query you know it looked for each instance of this check number and it found two so for each one here it found two one two one two so you're bringing back four so you can see here here's the two up there two down here for a total of four so basically you're repeating it you're basically doubling your the cost for, associated with this check number in this query now <clears throat> how do you solve that well you could concatenate the um, fields by adding more joins it's not a true concatenation but it's, uh, it's sort of like that you can think of it that way 
and let's run it now and you see no more re repeats there's also there's a second way to fix this problem and that would be um, creating a separate query for the vendor activity um, check number and vendor and here we're assuming you know logically that uh, a given unique check number is going to be associated with only one vendor so there you go so basically this is just grouping the check numbers um, and so we only have check number and vendor so the double comp groups into this check number only once in this query so save that vendor activity for come back here we can now connect that query um, and there you go so there's two ways to fix that and a lot about um, joining tables um, a lot about learning about joining tables um, is hinged upon playing with with tables you know doing what I just did, going through scenarios, always sort of double checking um, your source data to make sure you know things match up and, and basically I, I didn't say it outright but we with this query here we're basically making check number a primary key um, so and I didn't really touch on that explicitly but I wanted to sort of show you some examples instead of giving getting um, too heavy into the jargon. So I uh, hope this has been beneficial for you. We'll see you in the next video.